Welcome everyone to the April webinar uh, as part of our series on uh, Indigenous Women Chefs. I'm Mindy Kurzer. I chair the, the planning committee for the annual conference on Native American nutrition. And as you know, because of the postponing of the conference and the uh, inability to do in-person activities this year, we're hosting uh, different webinar series. And the one that we're very, very excited to host is a series of women chefs uh, who are indigenous and are sharing their culture and their food uh, knowledge with us. Today, we are so honored to have Hillel, Chef Hillel Echohawk with us. Uh, Hillel is Pawnee and Athabascan. She was born and raised in the interior of Alaska around the Athabascan village of Mentasta, home to the matriarchal chief and subsistence rights activist, Katie John. Watching Katie John and other indigenous peoples fight for food sovereignty and seeing her mother strive to make healthy home cooked meals for her and her six siblings gave Hillel a unique and important perspective on diet and wellness. Echo Hawk is dedicated to the food sovereignty of native peoples and is committed to empowering all indigenous peoples by increasing knowledge of and access to traditional diets and foods. After receiving her bachelor's degree in culinary arts from Seattle Central College, Hillel has been working as a cook in some of Seattle's most innovative and popular restaurants for several years. She's also worked as a private chef catering various events from the local native nonprofits and native community events with pre-colonial indigenous meals. Welcome to Chef Hillel Echohawk. We also are very, very honored today to have as our chef commentator, Kim Tilson Braveheart, who was the chef in our last webinar. Kim is Oglala Lakota, and uh, from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. She's a small businesswoman, entrepreneur, executive chef, and co-owner of Etiquette Catering Company, a unique artisan catering company located in the heart of downtown Rapid City. Kim is a sixth generation entrepreneur, proud to be part of the Tonka Bar family. She's an entrepreneurship and economic development specialist helping to assist in the launch of over 187 small businesses throughout the country. She's been featured in many magazines and has received a number of awards. Uh, and we are so delighted that Kim is able to be here today as our commentator to work with Hillel uh, during this webinar. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Hillel. Go ahead and uh, begin, begin the webinar, the cooking. Tell us what you're gonna make. Nala, Kotakoka. Um, thank you so much. I am uh, like like Mindy said, I am Hillel Echohawk. I am a member of the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma, an adopted member of the Athabascan uh, Nation in um, uh, Alaska. Um, and I am honored to be here today to speak to you, to cook for all of you and um, to, to just hang out with you and to talk with Kim. Um, this is our first time working together, I believe. Uh, and, and I'm just so excited. Uh, yeah, so I just hope that we just have fun today. Um, today I am cooking for you kind of a mix of Athabascan and Pawnee foods. Um, uh, I really believe that it's important for um, myself to kind of um, one for my myself and for my family and for Native people to really share our our foods um, and and not not our knowledge per se but um but our foods around talking um because that's how we have 
really stayed relevant. Um, and that's how people know that we are still alive. Uh, and so I found that sharing both of our, our foods have, have really helped in that area. Um, and so today I'm going to share, show you how to make a uh, pan fried sage corn with uh, green onion, uh, roasted baby red and um, uh, fingerling potatoes with some nettle tea and um, honey reduction um, and a pan fried white fish with tomato sauce. Um, and with both of these, um, you can play with it, you can um, change it up, you can make it your own. Um, it's, it's really easy to interchange the ingredients, um, especially right now with all of the amazing spring produce that's happening. Um, so, so yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I have already started the reduction um, because that takes a little while. Uh, and the nettles, uh, it, was, uh, it was a gift that was given to my brother-in-law that, uh, that I stole um, <laughs> a little while ago. <laughs> he had a big bag of it and I just took a little bit of it. So don't tell him. Um, yeah, don't tell shit, shit, shit. Um, <laughs> uh, so for, um, I already cut some of the potatoes, so I'm gonna cut a little bit more. Um, here is uh, some of the little red potatoes and some of the fingerling potatoes. So we're gonna cut those up. Hillel, could you move your phone camera just um, a little more onto the cutting board? A little lower, uh, just the phone. Yeah. One. Like, what? That's great, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to toss the potatoes. Uh, also, this is not my my normal house. This is one of my brother's houses. Um, so, thank you, thank you, Ted, for allowing me to to do this. What spices did you put in the potatoes? I'm sorry? What spices did you put in the potatoes? Um, I just used some salt, some olive oil and some salt. Um, and then, then I'm going to toss in a little bit of onion powder. Toss, toss, and put it right there on the they're nice and even. And put it in the oven. The oven is at 350. And those are gonna go for at least 15 minutes, probably a little bit longer. So I'm gonna set a timer. Okay. 
think I set a timer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we are going to cut an onion for the tomato sauce. Hillel, those were fingerling potatoes, weren't they? Yes. Fingerling and little baby reds. Are those one of your favorite? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And why is that? Um, I just think that they, especially for roasting, I think that they taste better. Um, I like the sugar content of them um, and how they like crisp up um, and I I don't know I just think they're fun <laughs> that's a good answer I, I, I was just curious because I we had a couple of questions about what kind of potatoes you used and why oh. um, you know I mean like food should be fun yeah I agree yeah. I also um, like Fingerling, I liked like the imperfections of them, you know, because they're kind of different shapes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, I got from, so everything that I got, I got from, um, uh, from Fred Meyers or I either had from uh, previous, um, um, you know, shopping trips. Oh goodness, is that upside down? I'm sorry. Um, and uh, so it's all, it's all, you know, everything that you can get at the store. It's, you know, nothing was too like exotic. Um, <laughs> it's all. And you're using your a uh, yellow onion for your sauce, the base of your sauce. Yeah, they're gonna ask all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Kim, yeah, of course, the yellow onion. <laughs> all right, um, and then with this, I mean, you can chop it however big or small you want. I like it. Oh, yay big, about a quarter inch. Of course I would miss a little bit. Plate here. Try to keep things tidy as you make things. Oh, that's a strong one. All right. Still see? No. Okay. Got three cloves of garlic. I know I might grab some more. And see how it goes. I always see this meme going around like, oh, the, the recipe calls for two cloves of garlic, but I add 20. Yeah, <laughs> that's the same. I'm like, can we get more garlic? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems right. Um, oh gosh, I should have done this beforehand. <laughs> One of the things I do is I just use when I'm trying to peel it, I put the on, the garlic down and then I put my knife on it and the peel That's kind what, of goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Take off the little end. Hi 
How do you do it? Do you like mince mince or do you just slice slice? I kind of, I mince, I think, because I, yeah. feel like I, I mince so that they don't, it doesn't um, brown, you know, it browns more evenly, I think. Uh -huh. um, we have a question about nettles. Um, do you use nettles a lot in your cooking and other recipes? And if so, do you know what kind of vitamins or minerals are contained in nettles? Um, I have started to now that I live here in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, so growing up in the interior of Alaska, there is not a ton of, um, uh, nettles. Uh, and in, I don't think there's any in the plains. Yeah. I don't know. They do make nettles tea. Um, we are in the Black Hills. Um, and so I think that we have, you can find them. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've seen people make nettles tea here and I've never used it because it's not something that I've ever been taught. Um, but I don't know what vitamins, um, I know that people say, I know that people say that it's really good for your immune system. It's ridiculously good for your immune system. I mean, it has like vitamin C, it has vitamin A, it has, I mean, it has like- it has vitamin A, A and B too. Yeah, it has like everything. Um, and so if you, <clears throat> And it, it uh, but it grows in the Southeast Alaska because it's like all rainforest down there. Um, oh, excuse me just a second. Um, so yeah, so I feel even though I didn't grow up with it, uh, I, I waited I, I now have lived here for about 10 years. Um, I waited to learn about it a little bit more and, you know, having it in Southeast Alaska, I, I feel comfortable using it. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm a, a fraud. <laughs> Um, uh, one of the guests, Angie, she would like to know if you could show her what the nettles look like. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, Hillel. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. You still hear that? Yeah, you have feedback. Hey, will you stop? <laughs> we might have to turn that camera off completely if it continues. A lady, Marilyn, asked, um, what are nettles? All right, am I still getting crazy? Uh, Can you mute the sound on your phone? It is. Shoot. Take this spotlight off.
Does that work? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Goodness, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> it happens. I mean, technology, you know, it's all, it's great until it doesn't work, you know? Um, yeah. So we were asking a couple questions about nettles. Like, what are they? What are they? <clears throat> Um, are they easy? Are they easy to harvest? Are they hard to harvest? Um, they are a wild green, uh, technically, <laughs> um, like a wild uh, weed of sorts. Um, they really help with arthritis. Um, they sting you, it's called stinging nettles. Um, and if it's your first time harvesting them, then you really should be wearing like gloves and long sleeves and pants and, you know, like really like, you know, make sure that you're protected because you'll, you'll come out not feeling very great. Um, <laughs> but they taste really good. Uh, they have a, a, if you like bitter things, then, then, um, it, you'll really like them. Uh, they, they're, they're just delicious. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. a tea here um, that we call Shayaka, and it's a Lakota wild mint tea. Um, mm -hmm. and it's so delicious, and I just like love the way it smells in the summer. And it's actually it's a little bitter, but it's more sweet, I would say, even without honey. But it's really good, and we use that a lot during our ceremonies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, a woman wants to know, where do you buy the nettles from? Um, you can buy it online. Uh, there is, oh gosh, I'm completely blanking on the name. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. We see can, the packaging. Um, send the website later. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, that's so annoying. I'm sorry. With a silver bag. <laughs> um, someone said organic matter is a great online bulk shop. So I don't know. I've never heard of that one specifically. But. Yeah. Um, there is this native herb, um, urban tea online store. I'm trying to remember the name of it too. I can't. I'm sorry. I said, I'm trying to remember the name of the, this like native, um, tea and herb shop online. And I cannot remember the name of it. Native harvest. Yes. Native harvest. Yes. Yeah. 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 You want to know a funny story? I actually interned Always. in Arizona when I was like 16 and I was driving in Northern Minnesota. I was driving her and then she's like, stop. So I stopped on the side of the road and she's like, grab that black garbage bag. And I go out and there's legit like a badger, like dead badger <laughs> on the side of the road. And I am like super, you know, ah, and she has me grab the badger and put the bag over, grab the badger. And then she's like, throw it in the freezer when we get home, we'll make badger stew. I was like, <laughs> and I was about 16, I was interning for them. So that was an interesting experience. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My, oh my gosh, it sounds like something my dad would do. He would, anytime that there was like, he, one time he, 
uh, like slammed on the brakes. We were going to like Fairbanks or something. Slammed on the brakes because he saw a porcupine on the side of the road and he wanted quills and like jumped out of the car, took off his hat and like threw his hat at the porcupine. <laughs> I mean, he's done it like several times <laughs> with his hat or with a jacket or with a roll of paper towels or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we're just like, I, uh, okay, <laughs> I have whiplash <laughs> now, but. <laughs> That is so funny. I know here that's how it is. It was like everyone's like, if you see a porcupine on the side of the road, let me know. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you quartering, are you just chopping up the tomatoes? Yeah, just a rough chop. Like it doesn't have to be pretty. And what kind of tomatoes are you using? Um, these are just your average on the vine. Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> on the vine, um, tomatoes, they were not, um, I was debating between Roma's or, 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 or these ones and, and these ones went out. They looked prettier. <laughs> and I feel you, you gotta go with what looks good and, you know, looks right yep. there. They felt, they felt better. <laughs> and about how many tomatoes are you using? Uh, I used three. Which I think might have been too much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of people in my family. So <laughs> You do have a huge family. I feel like in everything, everyone's like, there's at least one Echo Hawk in there. Oh, there's so many of us. There's <laughs> like, yeah. And it's always like, if I, everywhere I go, there's always like, do you, are you related to Echo Hawk so-and-so? Or do you know so-and-so Echo Hawk? <laughs> like, I feel yes. Like, yeah. That's my cousin, that's my uncle, or, yeah. that's my sister. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I get mixed up for one of my sisters. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Okay. I, okay, what are we doing on time? Oh, shoot. The tomatoes. I mean, the potatoes. Oh, okay. Those are nowhere near done. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start this now. I'm going to start with the onion, I'm gonna throw in the uh, uh, garlic. I also have some, some fresh thyme here. And uh, then we're gonna throw in the tomatoes. I also have some other spices over there in the corner that I uh, may or may not use. Like I said, food should be fun. All right. I'm gonna put on a medium heat and check this out. So if this is the, oh, is that, can you see that? This is the reduction. Do you want to tell them how you made it? Yeah. So I started with this pot. It's about a, uh, a two quart pot of, um, of tea. Um, and I started with uh, three tablespoons of nettles of dried nettles um, and two taste of honey. Um, and uh, I have put in probably 
three tablespoons about because you know it like gets sweeter over the reduction time yep. and um so serve that let it come to a boil and then i let it sit uh steep sorry um for about five minutes then i switched it to another pot to let it um Uh, to let it reduce for a little bit more. And then I moved it back over to this pot. <laughs> um, and I let it go for a little bit more. Um, I forget why. Oh, cause I needed to let it, uh, I didn't have a, a straining device. So I had to <laughs> improvise on my straining. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some metal bits in here. <laughs> um and uh yeah, so I just let it go on a on about a medium heat and and this is what it what it looks like now. I kind of would like to let it go a little bit more, but I don't think this is good. Awesome. All right, using olive oil. Oh, this is my brother's um, apartment. I don't quite know where everything is. Do the the joys of being of cooking in a brother's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm super grateful that he is letting me do this So, Yeah, it is really awesome that he did. Yeah, because I'm staying with um, my sister Colleen and her husband with their two kids right now during quarantine. Oh, okay. Because like, it's just, it's just being by my side. You normally live by myself and like, yeah, that's just, you know, quarantining by yourself is not, no, it's not fun. Ideal. Um, and my sister is running for mayor. And Amazing. I saw that. That's so cool. Yeah, like super exciting. And, you know, the kids are, are in school. So they're like on, on their things for school. My brother-in-law does, um, consulting so he's on the laptop as well and so it's like you need someone to buy it yeah yeah I had no place to do this today <laughs> I yeah yeah That's so I just you use it it's working it's working great so you're just weren't you're um gonna caramelize the onions or what are you doing over there yes yeah just caramelizing the onions um, and then I'm also heating the pan for the corn. Awesome. Yeah.
you want it on like a medium high heat for the corn. This one of these, these are so great. I know. <laughs> My salt cup. Sage. What kind of corn do you, are you using? Um, I'm using a canned corn. Um, I tried to find corn on the cob, but it is just not around. It's, okay. it's not in season. That's fine. It's you not in season. You can use, yeah. Yeah. What do you season the corn with? I seasoned it, <clears throat> seasoned it with sage and salt. Okay. Um, and uh, the salty taste. Adding in the garlic now. When you do corn in a pan, you gotta watch out because it's gonna like spray. It's gonna, it's going to pop basically. Um, so that's one of the great things about that that screen. And this recipe, can you tell us again what the recipe is? It's a white fish and red sauce, did you say? What? I, I said the recipe is a white fish in red sauce. Is that yeah. right? Okay. is um, rockfish. It is a favorite here in um, the Pacific Northwest. All right, adding in these tomatoes. asked at the rock rock fish is that a freshwater fish or seawater sea. seawater okay and this is a really popular fish from your from your tribe up there um in uh yeah on the coast okay yeah um but in the uh uh river in alaska there's um there's a white fish that's really popular. Yeah, um, I'm totally blanking on the name. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just always known as a as white fish. Yeah, um, I'm Jewish. That's what we say too. <laughs> <It's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I get it. Yeah. Um, and then in uh like back in the, like age like forever ago um i actually just read it uh in the loop river because pawnees were on the loop river uh we uh we used to fish um yeah so i don't i don't know what's in there 
I need to, I need to figure that out. <laughs> What do you guys fish? Um, I mean, we have a river, we, we have a river, we have the Missouri River. And I think that people do some trout fishing there. There's some walleye, um, but oh. I mean, I grew up in Minnesota, so I grew up with a lot of walleye, a lot of northern, oh, yeah. you know, um, fish from up there. But honestly, like I cook a lot of fish and every time I cook food, fish for anything around here, people are like, we don't eat fish. <laughs> oh. I'm like, I'm sure we did because we had to have bartered. Um, so yeah. Uh, do you make any vegan dishes? I know I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I make lots of vegan dishes. Um, I make this three bean salad. Um, it's three different kind of pawnee beans um, with a, uh, uh, like an apple cider vinaigrette um, and uh, some like whatever herbs are in season. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's nice. I think that's one thing that's so cool too about like indigenous foods is most of our foods like don't contain dairy or gluten because that's not traditionally what we ate. Um, so, you know, it's understanding like, especially like for me, one of the things I've learned about like Lakota foods is that everyone thinks that we just ate meat all the time and we didn't, we actually sustained ourselves on you know, wild, um, you know, wild turnips and wild different herbs and greens and berries. And so instead of it just being primarily meat-based, it was actually not. Um, and that's right. what, yeah. It's, um, yeah, sorry, I'm listening. But it's okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's one of the things I think is cool, too, is that most people are like, could you do dairy-free? Could you do gluten-free? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, most of our foods are so <laughs> already gluten-free and dairy-free. Um, and then just, you know, figuring that out. Um, Keith wants to know, did if you sprinkled the fish with onion powder or what did you season it with? Um, I just used salt. Just salt, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, um, Michelle, I personally do not cook fry bread. Um, I actually call it colonizer bread, um, but I know a lot of people, a lot of people who do, um, which is, which is fine. Um, and it's not tradition. I would not say it's traditional. It was a bread that was kind of made out of survival and, um, resistance of saying like, you know, they gave when we were pushed on to reservations, they were given flour, sugar, and oil, and they figured it out and made the best of it. And that's what fry bread is, as the roots of fry bread is coming from. Um, but I also think that it has a lot to do with the pandemic of di diabetes in native communities and um, as well as obesity and the other things. So I, and the, the, the other chef that you're um, speaking to Michelle is Sean Sherman, who is definitely a mentor of mine. And I think of Hillel's and most of us, um, he's given us space to be able to do our food the way that we want um, and speaking to our cultures and our traditions. Yeah, I don't do fry bread. It's probably the most requested thing that I get though. <laughs> We were like, will you make fry bread? And I'm like, um, no. No. <laughs> you can go to the tourist place down the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, a native food truck here that does it. And I'm like, you can you can go to them. 
Exactly. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of water to this. Um, all right, I'm gonna start frying this fish. Um, you need to cook it all the way through. Uh, but it's just like any fish, you need to like make it nice and crispy on both sides. And about how long do you cook on both sides, the fish? Um, it's just, it's, it's nice and lean. So it's just a couple minutes on both sides. And when you're frying, your pan's on pretty high heat? Um, it's on a medium heat. This is a fish that's used a lot for like um, uh, fish and chips or um, uh, it's used a lot. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I haven't had coffee today. Uh, it's used a lot for um, like nice entrees here. Um, yeah, it's like a really, it's a very popular Fish here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Is this is this fish in particular one of your family's favorites? I'm sorry. I said, is this dish in particular one of your family's favorites? Um. No. <laughs> I love you, hello. You're like, no, I just wanted to cook it. <laughs> oh, you are so funny. <laughs> You're like, I cook for myself. I don't cook for other people. <laughs> I mean, I cook for others, but I don't cook for them. Like, I don't <laughs> Right, I get it. Oh, my daughter, my nine-year-old today, she's like, uh, could you bring bring me some of that elk summer sausage and make me a charcuterie for my school lunch? I'm like, mm, sure. <laughs> I'm like, she's nine. <laughs> I'm like, the, the, the work that goes into that summer sausage, but like, that's, you know, that's where she's at with her, what her expectations are of me. Yeah, it's like, yeah. How's your potatoes coming? I'm sorry? How are your potatoes coming? I think they're just about done. If they're not, then I don't know what is happening. You might have to turn your, your heat up, I think. Oh, yeah. oh, they look good. Look beautiful. Do you like cooking? Um, Keith asked if you like cooking with cast iron. I prefer cooking with cast iron. Um, I love cooking with it. Cast iron is probably my favorite. Mine too. 
Plus yeah. it builds like a really nice crust on everything. I even make some of my, like I, I do this like ground cornbread that I love cooking um, in, in the cast iron. I just feel like it gives it this nice crust. Yeah, and it's just like the, I mean, it really does make everything taste better. It does, it does. I know, I, I agree. Yeah, and then when it has the, um, like the, the perfect seasoning and you don't, when you can cook an egg on it and it doesn't stick. Yeah. I feel like that's when you won. <laughs> Mindy said, and I think you get some iron in your diet from the pan too. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, how are we doing on time? You have about five minutes left to cook and then we have 15 minutes of Q&A, but I think you're doing okay because we've been answering the questions throughout. Uh, just ask me if you can leave the proposal and I'll send it back and I'll call him in, in 15 minutes. Sorry, my roofing guy just came. I just add a little bit more salt. Okay. I think I'm ready to play. <laughs> hey, awesome, exciting. I'm gonna switch you guys over this way. <laughs> Can you see me? Yes. Starting with the potatoes. You want to get, I mean, however much you want, really. <laughs> I'm trying to come back in potatoes, but they're so good. They're my favorite food. I should not be eating them because they're like, I could literally eat tons of them. Mashed potatoes are like heaven. Oh, so yep. Food, pop, pop, I buttered popcorn, like yep. over buttered and overly salted popcorn, <laughs> and mashed potatoes. Super comforting. I know somebody's like, if you had a choice between mashed potatoes and flowers, what would you choose? I was like, mashed potatoes, hands down, every single time. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> obviously. It's just a, yeah. Um, okay. And and. I would definitely choose the ones that are like crispy. Yes, beautiful. bed of 
the uh, of the sauce. And the sauce, the sauce was super simple. Like you don't need a fancy tomato sauce. Yeah. You can if you want, but what? You really don't. I mean, that's why I tell people is onions, garlics, and tomato is like, that's it. You really don't, and a little bit of salt. You don't need very much. And it's delicious. Yeah. Like, I'm like, why do you need, why do you, what, why do you need to be like super fancy? <laughs> You're like, just make good food. Yeah, exactly. Just make good food. Like, be the, like, let the technique uh, like shine. Like, right. You shine through the technique. Like why do you have to add all of this other stuff? Right. Yeah. And then you're like masking the actual flavor of the tomato. Exactly. I agree. Let your ingredients speak for themselves. Exactly. Because I really like corn and I think it's fun to just like mix it in with everything. Just put it all around. <laughs> over the potatoes Ooh, awesome it looks so good you should have a bite so we can see how it tastes okay, okay. all right we uh one of the things that makes this fish so popular is that it's just like so flaky. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so good. It's delicious. Awesome. Yeah, it's flaky. It's like it's simple it's light but yeah well i'll be making it it sounds so good and so easy yeah and it's like it's not yeah it wasn't hard it was it was relatively fast <laughs> And with the corn, all you did was you roasted the corn with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and a little bit of culinary sage. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Super easy, super delicious, and fairly healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Hello. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Is there, is there any questions, comments? They're just saying, thank you so much, Chef Hillel, or Chef Tilson Braveheart. This was lovely and nourishing. I love the simplicity of it. Um, Tina says, Hillel, I miss you lots. Tina Young. Oh. And then Sarah Rosenberg asked if Hillel is a traditional name. No. <laughs> it's very Jewish. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> I was like, I'm fairly certain it's a Jewish name. <laughs> Grew up in a very, very religious household. <laughs> it's a very Jewish name. It's a man's name. 
Yeah, everyone's like, I was wondering if that, if it was a Jewish name. I always, I should have asked. I was like, is she Jewish too? <laughs> <laughs> No, just like borderline cult religious. <laughs> Not anymore at all. Um, but well, that's how I grew up. What is your all time favorite recipe to make? Oh. Uh, geez, I don't even know if I can answer this. It's okay. Did you just put the nettle reduction on top of the fish with like, did you just drizzle it on top of everything or what did you use that for? Um, I put it on top of everything. Awesome. Um, Carrie Dini wants to ask if cooking for a large group, what traditional dish would you make? Um, it really like depends. Um, I do a lot of buffalo dishes. Um, yeah, uh, I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of dishes with like squash and uh, uh, beans. Um, yeah, I mean it just it just really depends on on, on the group. <laughs> awesome. um, yeah. It's the same for me. I think I use a lot of, I make a lot of Buffalo dishes, a lot of squash. I use some wild rice in my dishes as well. Awesome. Um, are there any other questions, comments? Everyone loved it. They said you did a great job. Hillel, you were fun. Fun. Oh, people were asking if you're going to send the actual recipe. If you just, if you send it to Jared, Jared can send it out. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, I think that's about it. I don't see any other questions. It was fun to finally kind of cook together. <laughs> We'll have to do it in person soon. I'm fully vaccinated. Are you yet? Awesome. Yeah, vaccinated, please. Yes, please go get vaccinated. If you are not, you should vaccinate. Yeah. Well, you did a great job. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. It's so wonderful to like see your face, to see Mindy's face, to mm -hmm. see your face. Like, I'm sure everyone else's face is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't get to see their faces either. So I'm sure that they have lovely, uh, oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, lovely faces. Well, thank you. I see you soon. I don't know, if Mindy, if you want to say anything else. Sure. I'd like to thank everybody who tuned in. And of course, Chef Hillel. And Chef Kim, thank you both for sharing your experience, your food, and your thoughts about it. And uh, it was a wonderful presentation. The audience loved it. Um, somebody just wrote, you're lucky to not see my face. <laughs> I guess that's probably true for a lot of us who are still in our PJs, right? But not just the face. Um, but I want to thank everybody who tuned in. I want to thank our chefs. And it was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. I would like to remind everybody that our next session, our next webinar is Tuesday, May 11th at 12 o'clock Central Time. It will be uh, Chef Crystal Wapipa and our commentator will be Chef Elena Terry. So please uh, tune in to that. I think that there's a link uh, on the, in the chat session so you can register. Also a link to a survey because we'd love your feedback and your comments and your questions about today's, uh, today's uh, webinar. So thank you everybody, especially Kim and Hilla, but also all the people who tuned in and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye everyone. Bye.